everything fine with this everything fine with this let's go hello and welcome back to the Grand Masters League guys and this is round six a little bit delayed um, I know we've actually entered round seven week now but uh, we're actually covering round six right here because um, these games were played quite late as Jordan and Dogal were very busy and they couldn't get them played in time however they were played yesterday so I'm gonna do the commentary on these today and the commentary on the round seven games for the first set as well today so there's gonna be a lot of GML on Monday Day, today obviously um, but I'm sure we'll get through it all and we will uh, we'll get it we'll get through it we'll get through it so uh, what have we actually got well we've got Jordan 23 versus Dogao Jordan playing in blue over to the right as Vikings and his opponent RVK Dogao playing over to the left as Vikings as well in red and I actually thought game one was Nomad obviously I'm wrong this is Islands um, just just prove that it is Islands yes it is Islands and um, I thought the first game would be Nomad but the next game is obviously going to be Nomad this is the home map, map choice of Dogao and um, maybe he's feeling confident on the water against Jordan uh, but Jordan is by no means going to be an easy opponent for him to face as well Jordan is really really on top of his game at the moment um, you've seen he plays a lot with the Viper he's been playing pretty well so far in the tournament but uh, I don't think Jordan's actually got many wins so far this tournament so uh, maybe Dogao feeling like yeah you know I can win this uh, this 1v1 in um, in islands so we'll see how it goes for both of them gonna speed things up just a little bit while things get underway and excuse me while I just ah, oh, okay my, uh, I thought my game sound was higher than usual but it's not um, so let's have a look at their maps real quick as well Jordan with two big golds here as you do get in islands um, reasonable position actually um, they're not too close to the edge so they're not going to be harassed by ships um, easily at all and we have for Dogao two golds at the back which are fairly close to the water so he's going to want to be a little bit careful perhaps with these because he will not want to get them harassed by galleys that could be pretty bad and really um, you need plenty of gold in these kind of maps because of course grushing is on the cards and that is what we'll probably see from both of them and I've seen some players not bother going for loom and I'm going to be curious to know if Dogao actually goes for loom here or if Jordan goes for loom because I think it was in the Ming versus Tim games I think it was Tim or Ming uh, one of them didn't get loom at all and that extra 50 gold that they saved allowed them to get a much better grush on the way and if you consider the fact that ah, you're actually on an island uh, your opponent can't attack your villagers very easily at all it might actually make quite a lot more sense to actually not get loom until maybe you know, late stages of the game in case you get landed or something but really that extra 50 gold that you save from getting loom can be used towards a uh, galley which does mean you can g gather a little bit more wood before uh, you move to move to gold and that way you end up having a much stronger grush overall I'm going to be interested to see if either of those players skip loom this game uh, skip loom that's a Pokemon <laughs> um, a little bit of an un fair map though I've got to say this uh, gold island here because of course in islands you've got the two large islands that the players start on and then you have two smaller islands one with stone and one with gold the gold island of course is on Dogao's side of the map and that is a little unfair um, I think there is a fixed version of islands actually that will come with the Forgotten Empires where the two islands with the extra resources on are always between the uh, two players so it's kind of annoying that the uh, gold is at the back here that's a real big advantage to Dogao if it gets to the late game and he needs to take extra gold from here and the stone of course on the front which uh, well there's only two piles of stone there so it's not really a big deal to take that uh, but of course there's no saying that the game will get to the late stage but of course if it does we've got to bear that in mind and uh, everything else pretty standard really um, Deer not too far out from Dogal there he'll probably try and lure those in with his scout cavalry I can only see three maybe he's already lured one I may have missed that and Jordan already taking Deer back here but not using his scout to lure them in he's just gonna finish exploring his island first and we might see we might see the players start building houses around their island to keep an eye out for a landing because of course in islands 
Um, the, the islands are pretty big and you can always uh, sneak a villager onto your opponent's land if uh, if you if you want to I guess uh, if you really wanted to you could build an extra dock down here it'd be quite risky and um, hide it out of the way and try and land your opponent so it's quite important to gain visibility all around the uh, the parameter or perimeter of your island so that uh, you don't get any sneak villagers getting onto your island and causing trouble um, we'll probably see four or five fishing ships from both of them um, I think we'll probably see four before Dogal goes up. He's almost up to um, up to four five hundred food. Even he's going to click up right now on twenty six population. And there's the fourth fishing ship coming out right now as well. Pretty much textbook play um, for islands. Sending all of his villagers over to wood right now. Adding in an extra fishing ship going up to five and then mainly just taking lots of wood and then starting to move on to a little bit of gold and doing a huge grush as to be expected really. Dogout of course not getting loom just yet, he's not spent that 50 gold, he's not got loom and uh, I suppose that makes a lot of sense. Jordan, he too not getting loom and uh, that is going to help them both out a little bit when it gets up to um, when they get up to the feudal age and they start their grush and that is something that I have actually never really done. I've always got loom even if it's on an island map and uh, next Next time I play islands, I'm actually going to try and not doing loom first. Uh, as long as you can keep your TC from being idle by getting enough food in at the early stages, you should be okay. And um, that might help out with the bigger, better grush. So I'm certainly going to try that one out next time, um, as it does seem like a very common sense sort of strategy to do. Save yourself the extra 50 gold um, and then, yeah, everything's a lot better. Uh, Dogao sending four villagers over to gold right now and Jordan sending three. So uh, Dogao is going to have a little bit more gold income right here and I think they're both up to the feudal edge at pretty much identical times. Dogao slightly further ahead. He lured his second boar in a little bit sooner I think or um, I think he may have took deer a bit earlier. Nope, he hasn't taken deer so Big, interesting really, Dogal managing to get up to the feudal age a fraction of a second ahead of Jordan, but that's okay, it's not so much of a big deal. Both of them of course docking up to the north of their island, and that is going to mean that they are fairly close together, and we will probably see um, some rushing coming in straight away from the top, and uh, yeah, of course we'll see galleys coming out as soon as Dogal can afford it. He's not actually got that much wood just yet. He's getting double bit axe before he gets his first galley out, and uh, I guess that makes sense because he is into the feudal age first, so he knows that uh, Jordan's not going to be producing any galleys just yet. And uh, Jordan too going up to the feudal age right now, just adding in an extra fishing ship as well. Um, going to go up to six, and I know that's just one extra fishing ship than uh, than dog is going to have, but that might help him out actually getting up to the castle age a little bit faster, or at least continuing his, um, oh no, he's cancelled it, I thought he was actually going to go and make that final fishing ship, and that would have delayed his grush, but it would have given him a huge economic advantage, but, uh, well not huge, but it would have given him quite a decent economic advantage, but obviously knowing now that he's up to the feudal age uh, in second, he will be able to just react to that by making galleys straight away, instead of finishing that last fishing ship could have just been a misclick for all I know. Uh, but there we go, two galleys about to come out for Doga straight away, 99%, uh, 68% and he's going to send them straight over, try and pick off some fishing ships if he can because of course fishing ships really are important to take out. So far though Jordan looks like he's getting a little bit further ahead with his dock production, he's already got his two galleys out which is actually uh, not too far behind Doga here at all. Doga with his fourth dock up and Jordan going up with his fourth as well, four villagers over on gold now. and. Uh, it's Usual, a usual rule that if you're going for four docks you'll send four villagers to gold um, and if you're going for three you'll send three and of course you've got to send a little bit extra to gold as well because you've got to bear in mind you're going to want to get fletching as soon as you can and that extra gold is going to be really useful. Jordan uh, a little bit bad there he's actually moved out of position with two of these galleys to scout Dogao out and he's found himself going to have to move his fishing ships away and they're going to get idle which is not good but it doesn't look like Dogao is going to be able to pick any fishing ships off at all for sure here. And uh, Jordan actually uh, quite low HP on these fishes, uh, sorry, on these galleys. He's going to have to micro this quite nicely in order to gain a little bit of an advantage here because he has lost quite a lot of HP on this galley. Of course, it's going to be adding more galleys in straight away, but Dogao already got 
quite a few galleys out on the water. Jordan going to have to react, and that's the difference it makes being a few seconds behind to the feudal age. Suddenly you can find yourself very outnumbered very quickly, and you've got to try and keep your galleys alive whilst your opponent is trying to chase you down and uh, and take them out as fast as you possibly can. So not so great for Jordan here. He's finding himself split up. His army's a little bit split here, and Dogao already has more galleys out on the water. Now the question is, is he going to go for a faster castle time now he's got a little advantage on the water, or is he just going to keep making galleys and try and um, try and take the water fully before he goes up to the castle age? I'm not quite sure. Uh, Jordan managing to get his army together here, and he should now be able to send Dogal back a little bit, but still no galleys have been lost just yet. Both of them keeping all of their galleys alive and together. Dogal looks like he's going to fall back a little bit, regroup his army, and then go straight back and attack Jordan. Of course, at the moment, they're both on four docks in total, and really their economy is exactly the same. Dogal likely to get an earlier plus one here as he does have five villagers over on gold right now he's already got his um his blacksmith up jordan's just moved a fifth over but he doesn't have his blacksmith yet so dogout could be getting the earlier plus one and that's going to help him out in the big battle when it comes to it there's fletching on 83 percent right now and now Dogal can engage Jordan quite easily with a confident, uh, confident edge because, of course, he's pretty much neck and neck for galleys. But that earlier plus one does mean that his, uh, that his galleys will be able to do more damage. Jordan, though, going around the back, this is really nice. Managing to take out the fishing ships from Dogal here. Dogal, though, going to do exactly the same. He's going to take out the fishing ships from Jordan. He's going to need to level it off because you cannot afford to have more fishing ships, less fishing ships than your opponent. Um, it's always worth trying to take them out. But nice from Jordan here running away with his fishers and he's actually made some more fishing ships as well getting a little bit cheeky perhaps thinking you know what I can make a few more fishing ships here and if I can keep them safe it'll pay off uh, Dogout going to tidy up here with a few uh, these galleys going to go down but it looks like he's going to be able to take out some of these fishers quite easily um, he is going to get right in there take them out as quickly as he can try and level things out a little bit and Jordan is chasing uh, <laughs> Dogout's fishing ships away he really does not want him taking any fish right here <laughs> of course Dogout quite a large navy at the moment I think they're both pretty much neck and neck it's 17 ships a piece oh no it's not 17 for Dogao 14 for Jordan I actually thought it'd be on equal numbers but obviously not and of course Dogao now with that plus one uh, Jordan's going to be getting it on the way I think yeah there we go Fletching just being researched now we just need a little bit more food for it but he's certainly a little bit further behind with the plus one there and that is not so great um, it does mean that he is going to have to wait to engage uh, but Dogao of course with the major most ships right here so if he does go for a straight up uh, engagement he should be able to take the water from Jordan here they're just trying to skirt around and micro out micro each other at the moment because they really cannot um, afford to go head on into battle and accidentally lose all their ships it's better to keep your ships safe rein them in every now and then and keep good control of them so you lose less ships than uh, less ships uh, as few ships as you possibly can even see who's uh, gonna go up to the castle edge first right now Dogao's starting to seed a few more farms of course he's moved villagers over to berries his economy's going pretty well he's got plenty of villagers out already so he can keep making galleys uh, pretty easily he should be able to afford to keep making galleys he's actually got the fifth dock right now as well um, with six villagers gathering gold. Um, but Dogout at this stage should be able to reach Castle Age in a reasonable time. Jordan, slightly less food in the bank right now, and he's got less farms at the moment. I think he's probably got the same amount of berry collectors, but of course, they both lost their water control, and that's not so good. Market going up for Dogout right now, and I could indicate that he's thinking about Castle a little bit sooner than Jordan might expect. And of course, we've got to bear in mind now, Jordan on four docks, and Dogout. He's sitting on five, and he's creating galleys from all five docks consistently. So uh, this is looking very nice for Dogao. He's certainly got more ships on the water. 22 for Jordan, and Dogao on 24. It's only two extra ships, but if he can get his uh, navy together, then he might be able to push an advantage. It looks like, though, Jordan has got most of his navy in one position, and that's going to help him massively in taking out this fleet, but he's going to go past him. I think Jordan may have just accidentally uh, gone a little bit too far there, not really paying too much attention and causing 
uh, himself to take big losses when in theory he should have actually been able to do a lot more damage than he did there. He, he lost a couple of ships, he should have been able to take out a couple of ships from Dogao, but a little bit of miss army, con miss army management there cost him a few ships and now Dogao has got the number advantage right here. Uh, actually you might need to bring these up in order to get the number advantage, but uh, as I said still being very careful with their galleys, reining them in at every possibility to make sure that they don't get taken out for no, uh, no reason. Uh, they want to make good trades, trying to get hits and a little split from Dogao there. Going to keep his galleys alive and the more he can take out from Jordan the better really. A nice split again causing Jordan's volleys to miss. And uh, again, good micro from Dogao. He's showed some great micro this tournament and uh, it's always good to see him um, on top of his micro management. And he's on top of it today, I'm pretty sure of that. Looks like he's about to click up to Castle right now. He's finished up his berries so he's going to want to get these villagers chopping wood again as soon as possible. He's just needs another, um, there we go, he's got it, he can click up to castle right now, Jordan on the other hand, so far from the castle age right now, he's only just seeding more farms, uh, his berries are about to finish as well, which is really bad because once the berries are gone, uh, he's going to have to make more farms with these villagers and that's going to slow his food count down quite significantly, so he's probably hoping right here that Dogao is not going to be going up to the feudal age or uh, castle age already, but the truth he is he's uh, already a quarter of the way up right now and or almost a quarter of the way up and uh, once he gets up to the castle age he's going to be able to do some big damage to Jordan here because Jordan is going to be so far behind getting up to castle that uh, he's going to have to retreat with his galleys for so long um, as Dogao will have the war galleys and the bodkin arrow upgrade done pretty much straight away both of them trying to micromanage out of each other's ways here, trying to just get some, as many picks as they can without losing as many ships as possible. And uh, 26 ships on the water for Jordan right now. Dogao on 27. It's so, so close with the numbers. But Dogao going up to the Castle Age already. And this is where it's going to get hairy for Jordan, I think. Because if Jordan's going to have to retreat with these. He can't engage war galleys head on, especially when they're uh, even for numbers. So he can't engage head on. What can he do? Um, well, the simple answer is he runs and he can only run for so long. If he runs all the way back to the corner or along here, then he's going to find himself losing his docks, as Dogao will probably just focus his docks down. There's no point in chasing for fleeing galleys, because they outrun you, and you simply won't catch them unless they just stop for some reason. But, um... If Jordan does run away, which you likely will do, then Dogao can try and focus down these docks and he can try and take the docks out and prevent Jordan from making any more galleys and then when Jordan does get up to the castle age he'll be severely disadvantaged. These berries, <laughs> these villagers even, quite idle for some time. If you look at how much micromanagement they're doing on the water, um, they're paying so much attention to this navy right here, and uh, it's not surprising really that these villagers have been neglected for a little bit. Um, I thought Jordan might just be a little bit more on top of his game than that though. Um, idle villagers for quite some time there, and that's going to cost him massively. That's uh, seven villagers that could be gathering for him, and they are not. Um, so that is a big problem. Now Dogao hitting the castle age just as Jordan is clicking up, and Jordan now probably going to try and flee with these ships because of course if we have a look at Dogao right here we will see War Galley on the way, we'll see Bodkin Arrow as soon as he can afford it. University going up as well so Ballistics will be on the way shortly also and where is it? Bowsaw upgrade should be on the way fairly soon as well as soon as he can afford that. So now Dogao going to have to go try and do some big damage to Jordan where he can. Is he getting Bodkin Arrow yet? Nope, not just yet. He might be getting, might be getting Bowsaw first. Uh, the wood upgrades is really important on uh, water maps, of course, as uh, they do really help you out in the long run. And now Jordan's going to try and focus down this dock. He might be able to actually take it out before Dogal makes it back. But Dogal, of course, with War Galley over here, going to focus down the docks from Jordan. And if he can take out this dock, uh, Jordan is going to take out his. But if he can take out all of Jordan's docks, then Jordan's going to be able to do absolutely nothing. Moving two villagers over to this corner, he might start to make some docks over here because he knows that his docks are under threat. And now Dogal going to head straight into this army here. He's not got plus two just yet. Uh, plus two is still not even on the way. Um, wondering where his upgrades are, he's slowed quite 
quite, uh, slowed down quite dramatically here. Jordan losing a lot of army right there as well, which is certainly not good. Uh, Don't have to have ballistics yet, but these war galleys doing a very large amount of damage, taking out Jordan's docks, which is certainly not good for him. That's going to cost Jordan quite a lot of resources back here, and now Jordan's going to have to run away with these galleys as uh, Dogal is going to chase him down with uh, these war galleys of his own. So very nicely done by him so far. Here, a new TC going up for Dogal. Going to make a new TC first, it seems. Uh, still no Bodkin Arrow or, um, or Bowsaw, which is kind of interesting. You'd think he'd go for that straight away, but he's gone for the second TC first to give himself a bigger economic advantage. And he's still taking out these docks over from Jordan over here. And Jordan's going to find himself in a very bad situation now as he's going to hit Castle Age. He's going to be very far behind on Navy. He's on 23 ships. Dogal on the other hand on 37 right now. And you can bear in mind as well, he's lost his docks also, which is going to be a real big problem for him. As, uh, of course, it's going to cost him extra wood to rebuild, and that's just going to slow him down even more, as uh, he really does need that wood for a new TC. He needs the wood for uh, making more boats, and he needs the wood for upgrading his galleys, of course. Uh, where is it being upgraded? 41% right there, and uh, it's going to probably be because Dogout isn't focusing down the stock at the moment. Uh, he is chasing down uh, Jordan's army though, and he has got much more numbers than Jordan has. Uh, he's probably completed Bosaw right now. I think he probably just upgraded. Um, oh no, he's not. Dogal still hasn't upgraded Bodkin Arrow. <laughs> I'm wondering where it is. I'm wondering where Bosaw is as well. It looks like he's not going for the economic upgrades right now. Oh, there we go. Bosaw being re researched right there. Really important to get that in quite fast, as uh, it really does give a large or uh, substantial. Um, Make, make a substantial difference to your income on wood and of course wood on these maps is so so important um, of course he's going to want to get another TC out as soon as he can he's going to want to keep up the war galley production as well so just more reasons why both are always good uh, Dogout are going to focus down this dock and as far as you can see this is the last dock from Jordan now Jordan making some more docks at the back of course making more war galleys at the back he's trying to get his numbers up Dogout on 44 Jordan on 27 he's still very far behind and um, you've got to bear in mind though that Dogao's army is split, half of it's up here, half of it's down here, he's chasing Jordan down, but Jordan going to meet some reinforcements now, he could turn around and clean up this army from Dog, uh, Dog's still with only plus one, Jordan with plus two right now, he's already got his Bodkin Arrow research done, and um, that is going to give him an advantage of course, it's going to give him extra range, it's going to give him extra attack, and Dogao's going to find himself running head on into this, and uh, Jordan now with these extra Docks back here giving himself a little bit of an edge, or getting him himself back into the game just a little bit. I do think Jordan might just put this battle down here. Uh, it depends. Dog might have ballistics. I'm not 100% sure, but Dog of course is going to retreat, I think. Um, I think maybe he's got it. It's hard to tell because when um, when these units are patrolled, they do stack on top of each other very quickly and very easily. And it does make it quite hard to see. But Jordan getting in there, sinking a lot of ships from Dog. And Dog now going to have to retreat. He's certainly lost a lot of ships here. And that is not good at all. But Dog's coming around at the back. He's going to start taking out the docks again. And uh, it's certainly not looking so great for Jordan right now. Uh, who needs to replenish his lumber camps um, and who needs to start getting more villagers out and really working on his economy to try and catch up in that regard. We have a look at their population, Dog on 100 and Jordan on 77. So Dogal's economy much larger right now. He's uh, making plenty of farms. Um, he's still making a lot of galleys as well and he should have Bodkinero at some point. He's still not got it. But right now he's at the back of Jordan's base taking out these uh, docks when he can. Starting to stem the flow of war galleys if he can prevent the war galleys from coming out, that's going to be great, but of course he's going to focus down these docks as well, and he's going to have to keep galley production up, he can't get, um, he can't get too laid back on the water, he doesn't want to just uh, stop creating war galleys because he thinks actually, you know, I've got the water here, uh, because your opponent could be still creating war galleys and then suddenly they outnumber you and uh oh, it's not good. But it uh, looks like Dogout going to have to retreat at the top here as uh, Jordan's going to come in with his main force. Of course, Dogout's going to be chasing him down as well. But his navy is very split up, very spread out, and all of uh, Jordan's navy is focused in one place. So he could actually um, clean this up fairly easily. Dogout still does not have Bodkin Arrow. I think he's forgetting this. Um, for quite some time. I don't know why he's forgotten it, but uh, he has. And there we go, that dock's just going to go down, I think, right now. And Jordan finding himself in a very bad position with only three docks at the moment. Dogout still producing from all four or five. Uh, I can't count. 
I swear he had four docks. Oh, he did have five docks. He lost one. But uh, dug out from four docks. He's not bothered making a new one. He's still got the advantage on the water. And his economy is going pretty well as well. Lots of farms coming out because he's probably thinking about the Imperial Age already. If we have a look at his food and gold count right now, he's almost up to a thousand food. He's almost up to 800 gold. He can be Imperial very shortly. And he's not even making a third TC just yet. He might just go for a very fast Imperial time and try and work on getting a uh, a very strong navy up as fast as he can. Jordan trying to add more docks in of course when he can as well and uh, docks still with that bodkin arrow. I'm just wondering why but uh, never mind. Uh, Jordan of course if we have a look at his resources his economy is much further behind at this stage of the game. Um, Dogout with a big score lead and it's certainly looking like it's going to start favouring Dogout here. Of course, he has split his army up, which does make it a much more vulnerable. But if he keeps running away and keeps escaping from Jordan here, he's able to use uh, this split to his advantage as he's coming up right now. He's going to start taking out these docks again, and Jordan, without docks, he cannot do anything to take the water control. But I do think he's starting to catch up in numbers now. He's got 20, sorry, 34 on the water. Uh, Dogout, of course, with 52. He's still in the lead, but uh, Jordan might just start catching him up. He starts taking out some of this over here. But of course, we have got Dogout on this side as well, sinking any ships that come out of these docks. And then start taking out those docks again. And it's just a little bit frustrating, I think, now for Jordan, as he's constantly having to deal with the, uh, the ships as soon as they come over to take out these docks. Dogout still with that bodkin arrow. But he is up to the Imperial Age right now, and that does mean he's going to have Galleon out on the water very shortly. And that is going to mean that he is going to take a huge advantage. Not only does he have the number lead, he will have the tech lead as well. Perhaps when he reaches Imperial Age, he'll go to the blacksmith and realise that he's not got Bodkin Arrow. Um, I don't know how you could overlook it for so long, but he has. Uh, that's no real big deal. Um, he's got the numbers. He's kind of avoiding Jordan anyway. He's just running away for as long as he can. And uh, Jordan might be thinking about Imperial pretty soon too, but right now he's population capped. And he's certainly slowed down by the fact that he's had to build extra docks consistently. And he's added in a third TC here as well, which is going to slow him down into the Imperial Age just a little bit, but he is starting to add a lot more docks right here at the back. He's got another five docks going up. He's continually replacing them, but as soon as he replaces them, Dogao seems to take them out. And uh, now Dogao, of course, is going to be forced to react over here as Jordan's trying to focus down these docks from him. And uh, Dogao is going to have to find himself building some more docks, I think. Um, Maybe he'll want to reduce the amount of villages he's got on food here. Uh, he's got a lot of farmers, and perhaps he'll need a little bit more wood. His wood count is getting quite low, and he does have a lot of farms, so maybe he'll be considering doing that soon. Um, but of course, he will need that food as well. He will need to get uh, like the galleon upgrade. He will need to get the economic upgrades. He will need bracer, and he will need uh, bodkin arrow as well. So that's all something to bear in mind. He'll need chemistry. It all costs a lot of food. So, I mean, the food is really important as well but of course he needs wood also in order to keep creating war galleys it's so important that he does not stop creating war galleys for as long as he possibly can cleaning up the docks again from jordan moving around the back and he's seen that ah, jordan's rebuilt i'll focus these docks down and take these ones out as well and now dogo just gonna want to keep his army alive while he reaches the imperial age and i think there's going to be a very big gap now because uh Dogout's going to reach Imperial, and I don't think Jordan's going to click up as soon as Dogout reaches Imperial. Uh, Jordan's certainly thinking about it. He's getting a bit more food. He's got uh, quite a bit of gold as well, but Dogout definitely going to be up to the Imperial Age in a very nice time here. And I think now he's probably going to realise... There we go, Bodkin Arrow. He, uh, he, was, he went to get Bracer, realised, ah, I've not got Bodkin Arrow. But he is going straight away for Chemistry. Um, he will be going for... Bow saw fairly soon, I think. Um, and of course, we see Galleon being researched at the dock as well. There it is, 33%. And I do like how uh, War Galley, Galleon, they are very fast upgrades. They do complete pretty quickly. And uh, there will be gall uh, Galleons on the water for Dogout in a matter of seconds. Jordan just clicked up to the Imperial Age as well. And he's still slightly further behind as Dog starts to continue taking out his. Uh, oh, sorry, Dog continues taking out his docks at the back. Of course, we are going to see Galleon from him very shortly. He's got plus two. He's probably now going to be getting Bracer. Uh, 
Um, oh, there we go, bracer from him. And he spent that food quite quickly, as you can see. Uh, that food does get spent very quickly as he gets the economic upgrades and, of course, upgrades his military as best he can. Galleon being done right there. Um, so we've got Galleons right at the back of Jordan's base. They're going to be focusing down these docks, of course. Bracer will be done, chemistry will be done. They're going to be on plus four. And uh, these docks are not likely to... Well, this dock is not likely to go up. And these docks are not likely to stand for much longer. Jordan still building docks all around his... Um, his base uh, or his island, he's consistently doing it, and every every moment this game passes, it looks like Dogao is getting further and further into the lead now. Uh, there we go, chemistry just completed, and uh, these docks won't last for much longer at this rate. There's a lot of galleons on the water for Dogao. He's going to be chasing Jordan down with this fleet over here. He's still making a lot of units at his docks. Well, he was. He needs to keep queuing them up, of course, but uh, adding more docks in as well, consistently doing that, careening on the way for the plus one ship armor. And really, it's looking very good for Doga right now. He's getting all of the upgrades in in quick succession. He's continually focusing down the docks from Jordan. And uh, I think Jordan here likely to find himself struggling in the water, especially now as Doga is going to come from behind. It's going to be a massive sandwich here. And Jordan resigns. Um, I think he realized how far behind he actually was. He still didn't make it up to the Imperial Age. Uh, he was almost there on, uh, I don't think we'll be able to see, it's still Castle, um, unfortunately, yes, and uh, Dogao really just taking that game quite easily it seems, um, Jordan not really so much of a match for Dogao in this situation, but bear in mind this was Dogao's home map, and that does make it 1-0, um, so we'll see what happens in the next map, because the next map will be Nomad, and that will be ch that is the map chosen by Jordan, um, so maybe Jordan might be able to do a bit of a better job on his home map, we'll have to wait and see for that one, but uh, again, very well played by Dogao, uh, taking that game fairly easily it seemed, and getting the tech advantage as quickly as he could, and he had the numbers advantage as well the entire game, so he played that very well indeed, and uh, it's never a good sign when your opponent uh, has to continually rebuild their docks, uh, because it costs so much wood to do that, and it just really delays you quite heavily. Surprised Jordan didn't replenish his lumber camp as well, actually. But uh, yeah, stay tuned guys, there'll be game two coming up uh, right after this.